what are some of the misconceptions about this idea of autophagy or mitophagy that you would correct for us? Because I, I think hearing it from you, someone who studies this would be really, really helpful. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Uh, we, we definitely can tell by your excitement. <laughs> well, you ask me any question about science, I'm going to get excited. <laughs> um, okay, so autophagy, just to define it for, for everyone, is so if when your cells need to break down something inside of themselves, so you're your cells can't constantly be building and building and building. Think of like a room. You just can't keep adding and adding and adding. Eventually, you need to start taking stuff out. And usually, you try to take out the stuff that you're no longer using or that it's that's broken for, for whatever reason. So your cells do the exact same, exact same thing. So you have, uh, you even mentioned the word before, proteostasis. So you have uh, more protein synthesis or you have protein degradation. Protein synthesis being the buildup of of any particular malt, like a particular protein. But we're talking about the other side. So we're talking about protein degradation, which which falls into three major camps. So you have uh, the proteolysis through like the cleavage enzymes. Um, you have the proteasome, which is a particular, it's, it, it's a funky looking little molecule that essentially grabs onto tagged proteins and funnels them through this what literally looks like a funnel and they just spits out the broken pieces at the other end and then you have autophagy which is this typically considered macro autophagy where you have this like this sack almost like think of like a garbage bag and it's almost like floating in in water which is what our cells are primarily made of and it will engulf these large swaths these swaths of the cell where you may have mitochondria, you may have parts of the endoplasmic reticulum or the peroxisomes that I mentioned earlier that nobody talks about, or uh, it, it just anything, any number of different proteins. So, and then once it, it, it sucks them up, I think a great analogy of that is like, if you've ever seen a whale eating krill, it opens its mouth and it's just this massive thing that just sucks up all this krill. And once it's got it trapped into in the sack, it'll close the sack, and then another vessel, another sack will come in and bind with the the previous one, which ultimately leads to the production of what's known as the autolysosome. Now, the autolysosome drops the pH of the autophagy machinery of this of these sacks. And it also introduces a bunch of degradation enzymes. So whatever's inside, whatever's trapped inside that sac gets bombarded with a bunch of quote unquote toxic materials that are specifically designed to just eliminate just those sections of, of the cell. So that's a background on autophagy, and that's a good thing to have in general. So in a healthy individual, you're, you're going to have certain levels of autophagy. It's going to go from high levels at certain points to low levels at other points. So that's fine, and, and that's how typically people think about it. And exercise is a potent stimulator of autophagy in a beneficial way. Uh, you know, Certain levels of fasting can can increase uh, autophagy. There's all kinds of different ways that you can increase autophagy. But does that necessarily mean that it's always a good thing? The answer is absolutely not. Um, so I, I've, I've been doing some reading on autophagy, some weird things that autophagy does that are kind of unexplained in fat tissue, but uh, I'll, I'll leave those for, for another time. But the the great example of that is in cancer, cancer cells can actually use autophagy for their own benefit. So, and the, the one question that I get, or I guess two questions that I get related to this is then, okay, what cancers and uh, is, it, is it this particular cancer? You know, it, it, does that mean that autophagy is then a negative? Uh, the answer is no. That doesn't mean that autophagy is always a negative then just because in certain cancers you can get uh, an upregulation of autophagy. It just means that certain cancers can hijack this system in a manner of speaking and use it to, to their own benefit. And there was this uh, study that was done where 
there was uh, this particular study that was, or this particular cancer, excuse me, that was uh, being studied. And they found that when they used, uh, let's say, a chemotherapy drug or some sort of drug against that cancer, it had some effect for a while and then it stopped having that effect anymore. So what they posited was, okay, well, let's see what happens when we block autophagy. And suddenly it became far, far more effective. And the reason for that is because the cancer cell was using autophagy to trap the chemotherapy drug, degrade it, and then eliminate it. So the answer is that autophagy is always, a, just like anything in the body, is an incredibly nuanced conversation. But by and large, I think the way that people should consider autophagy in their day-to-day -day lives is that if you're generally healthy, you're not suffering from any major issues, then autophagy is generally seen as a, as a positive. And would you say that it's happening no matter what? There, uh, exercise is, is likely probably the greatest stimulus. Are we going to... Mm. Would it be fair to say that if you are going into an overnight fast, you are generating some type of autophagy and um, it's not necessarily measured in a particular way, just to clear up some of the just discussions around autophagy? So yes, definitely. Uh, our body is constantly in flux and that's true of really any situation. Proteostasis is another example. So if we were to go one layer higher than autophagy. So that's, that's certainly true for autophagy. If you, uh, if you're just existing, you're going to have periods where autophagy is more upregulated and sometimes it has nothing to do with nutrient consumption. It's just increased because maybe you got sick. So your, your, your cells have to increase what's known as xenophagy. So they try to eliminate viruses and eliminate bacteria by increasing autophagy. And it doesn't matter if you've been eating protein or if it doesn't matter if you've been fasting for three days or it doesn't matter if you've been exercising. It's just going to force autophagy because it has to. Uh, but that's why it's it's generally the best to try to look at kind of averages and kind of look at a, at a healthy individual uh, as a whole. Uh, because they are going to see increases and decreases in autophagy that may be beyond their control, even though some elements are in our control. Mm. And and would you say, so for you, when you were thinking about your overall musculature, health and wellness and your mitochondria, is that something that is on your mind or you're just executing the day-to-day -day activities like making sure you're creating flux, making sure that you are exercising? And you know, I do want to talk about the impact that exercise has versus resistance training and endurance or cardiovascular, you'd mentioned zone two, as opposed to high intensity interval training. Are there multiple ways to get to one result? So with the, uh, the, the last part of that question, the answer is definitely yes. So especially if you're talking about autophagy, there's there isn't a whole lot of data on, on exercise and autophagy yet, mainly because autophagy is just discovered or really there's there's been a lot more research just recently. So the, the research really hasn't caught up to that. But my, my educated guess would be that absolutely yes. Uh, there's any form of exercise is going to increase autophagy. I wouldn't I don't, th you may, you may, end, we may end up figuring out like maybe resistance training may be better in certain circumstances. Like for example, resistance training is a, is a good example of proteostasis. Again, taking that one level higher, you know, prote autophagy being under the label of proteostasis, uh, resistance training can increase degradation for a short period of time where it tries to clear out, uh, particular broken pieces of the musculature or whatever it might be. So for that autophagy is probably going to be upregulated exactly for that, for that process. Um, but I probably, at this point, I probably wouldn't worry about exactly which exercise is going to be superior to another exercise simply because, at least there's no research yet on that. Now, in five years from now, the answer is probably going to end up changing. 